Hello and welcome back everyone to this Warcraft series. This is going to be between Ted and Ainu, who is up 1-0 against Yumiko and WFZ. Uh, this is from the Golden Cup, uh, Golden Championship series, all 2v2 playoffs, and this is the first round of playoffs. Um, yeah, very weird. Very weird indeed. Game 1 was definitely different. Uh, it just didn't work out. So, interesting players. Hainu spawning in as the red knight off in the bottom right, and his ally is going to be Ted. They are spawning in the bottom right side of Turtle Map, uh, Turtle Rock, and WC spawning in as the blue undead in the top left. Yumiko, the blue human on the top left as well. Um, he is going for the pretty much the same start as he always does in these 2v2s, funneling all his resources into his ally who is going double crypt very quickly, as well as Tom of Relic's Graveyard. Uh, essentially accelerated Ted build. And yeah, not going for any shenanigans with the early Necropolis. Um, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that because I don't exactly know uh, what he got out of an extremely early Black Citadel. Um, we haven't seen a single destroyer in that game. Uh, didn't even go Master's Training with his Banshees. So, the only reason he went Black Citadel is... Or a third hero? It... Yeah, it's a, it's a little weird. Thankfully, uh... It is only game... That was only game one, so we might see something different, which you already are. But it's just a standard, uh, double crit fiends here from WSZ. Hasn't worked so far, I think this strategy has lost every single game, so I don't even know what to think, because I have yet to see it win, so I don't know what it looks like winning. Ted going for a Ted opening as well, but a pretty standard one, Death Knight for him. Uh, standard opening for uh, Hainu, actually a pretty standard opening. This is most likely going to be Masked Archers into Transition Tier 2 most likely. Uh, rather than the Keeper of the Grove, stick to tier 1 uh, double huntresses. Yep. Uh, Mountain King basically being a slave to the Death Knight here. Um, not leeching any experience for the Death Knight just yet. Trying to get that level 2 Unholy Aura as quickly as possible, most likely. Double Clarities, most likely for his master. Um, because he, he can't really fill the void that a Blood Mage would fill, and a detonation right there from Hainu, uh, definitely not something he can avoid. Uh, he, he did take one hit from the Death Knight, and that could have uh, meant his death if he went for a Death Coil, but most ideally you would want either a Stormbolt or just Death Coil before you detonate to just waste your opponent's mana, but yeah, neither hero actually went for that. They were probably just anticipating the uh, detonation right there, so... A, player's force is a lot of mind games for both sides. Stormbolt onto the Demon Hunter after he got himself uh, mana burned very early on. Uh, Yumiko, or Blue Side, did claim the Watch Award, so they do have control of the top right area. Meanwhile, Ted is going for the bottom left, so he should be able to equalize on the vision advantage right there. Um, slightly better position on the Watch Award for the blue side, but I don't think it's going to matter too much. Demon Hunter is level 2, he does have plus, er, plus 2 on everything with the Circle of Nobility as well as the Cloak of Shadows. Uh, Cloak probably going to get sold as soon as a Ancient of Wonder is completed. And the Circlet is always just a good solid item to have. Death Knight, on the other hand, has the plus 15% attack speed on the Gloves of Haste. So, nothing too useful, but he does get the plus 6 close attack right here from the Ogre Warrior camp. And this is nice because he stole it right uh, from the blue side's half, so it's always nice to see. Lots of units moving. Are they looming to go for the Ogre Lord so early? I mean, it is probably a doable camp because you have two tanky heroes such as the uh, the Mountain King and the Death Knight. And of course the Death Knight can he just heal any Crypt Fiend that is going to tank that, so that would be pretty nice. 
Gargantuan Sea Turtle is getting cleared out, so a potion will mostly get dropped here. It's going to be a greater healing potion. Um, and Death Call to heal up those low hit point Crypt Fiends there. Ogre Lord is slowly going to get killed off. I mean, the focus fire of those Crypt Fiends is pretty, pretty intense. And that is going to be Tome of Experience and the plus 12 Claws of Attack right there. So I'm not sure if the Tome was exactly intentional or not. I mean, the Death Knight still got level 3, and it seems like Yumiko might be able to get level 3 on his Mana King regardless, so um, maybe that was intentional in taking the Tome of Experience. So either way, it worked out in the end. It could have just been a panic oh, click because you might never know. Uh, Demon is running around with the invisibility potion. Could potentially steal any item that gets dropped there. Uh, Crypt Fiend does get taken down while it was moving to the remainder of the force. And the red side, they do have the Naga Sea Witch out and about, but oh, the Death Knight looks pretty low as well. A lot of things could happen. Death Coil into Stormbolt, and that is definitely a dead Naga Sea Witch there. Oh, Mana Burn was just not enough to take down the Mountain King. He actually lived with single digit health, which is not something you see too often in Warcraft 3. But, yeah, definitely lucky on the, on the uh, blue side there, and it seems like the red team is getting split up. Not sure if, not sure if that's good for or which side, but definitely a lot of militia uh, sacrificing themselves to the uh, to high new, which is probably not ideal. Might be able to save some militia back, but those are quite a few free units, I think. But yeah, Nagasia, which was oof, uh, not not a good sight to see because she got quickly bursted down attack. with uh, a single round of spells, and now that the lich is out. Most likely going to be given those claws of attack there. Um, might just be even quicker in killing him. So yeah, uh, this gold mine is getting cleared out. Uh, Wisp is moving, and then it is going to place down a tree of life there. So um, that's something that was pretty good in game one as well, taking advantage of of a really really uh, passive team in WSZ and Yumiko. They usually like waiting around and stockpiling their army before starting to steamroll. But this just enables Night Elf players to get a free expansion and that's just like that's not something that you like to have happen to your opponent. Anyway, uh the Ogre Lord dropped another plus twelve cause of attack there, so that is a plus 26 damage Lich, are under uh, not even 10 minutes yet, that is insane. If that was given on a Blade Master, this game would have already been done. But since it's a Lich, uh, he is still prone to being focus fired here. Uh, he could go up to 31 with the Orb of Corruption, which he does not have just yet. Uh, but that is a scary number. <clears throat> Yumiko is getting attacked once again, of course. I mean, he basically has no defense, so he is a free target. Arcane Vault is going to get cleared out here. Um, I'm still wondering whether or not Yumiko is going to go for any sort of supportive units, either priests or mortar teams. Uh, I believe he did go mortar teams before, but uh, the game was kind of over by then, so maybe he'll get them early on. Blue side is chasing away the red team here, so that is definitely a good sign. Uh, asserting dominance, you just want to feel good about having a bigger army, but. I don't know, uh, 46, ver uh, 46 and 40 versus 53 and 23. Um, slight, it seems like slight advantage for the blue, uh, for the red Blade team in fact, despite them attack. losing a couple of units in the retreat. So it needs to be a little careful there from the blue team, try not to get too complacent. Uh, Blood Mage comes out as the second hero for Yumiko, that is going to be essentially the mana battery for the blue team here. Uh oh, Lich is getting caught out. He was trying to make a visit to the Ancient of Wonder, and that is most likely going to be a dead Lich at level 1. Uh, yeah, not good, but will it bite the blue team uh, later on? Because they are now in a bad position. This possibly will have to be a TP scroll because I can't see the blue team winning this sort of surround concave from the red side here. 
and yeah, TV Skull is going to be burnt. The undead army is going to be retreating. Two Crypt Fiends die before uh, the Deep Scroll is completed, but that is a. It's around four Crypt Fiend deaths. I don't know if Ted lost any himself, but if he didn't, then that was four Crypt Fiends lost for the blue side, which is a huge uh, blow to the All blue side's are under army supply. We do have a couple of workshops being placed down there. Castle is also being uh, produced as well. Not entirely sure what the castle is going to be for. Could potentially be a third hero. What happened? Uh, Blood Mage got taken out. That was super weird. I, how did he get taken out? I don't know, but um, he did. Crip Lord for WC is going to be the third and final hero. Meanwhile, Ted is going to get himself the Dark Ranger once again. So, uh, reoccurring cast of characters here. Arcane Vault once again going to get taken down. Mortar teams have finally finished, but one or two mortar teams is not going to be enough to deal with this huge of a threat. More mortar teams are being produced, but yeah, it's not looking good. Blood Mage has been revived, but he could. Uh, looks like he's going to get surrounded once again. Nope, he actually skips through Death Coil, uh, but Frost Nova is not going to come in to finish the job, so uh, very lucky Blood Mage. Could have gotten taken down. Uh, looks like the Demon Order of Hainu is going to be surrounded as well, but um, what is this? Turnaround damage on the Lich. The plus 31 attack is not going to live for long, and it is going to be the Crypt Lord and the uh, Blue Undead Army to retreat back to their home. Um, that was disaster for the blue team. They were the one that started that demon hunter surround, but uh, in return, not only did this demon hunter get or uh, manage to survive, he actually went for a counter kill on the lich, and that's the plus 31 attack uh, armor reduction lich as well. That is a huge uh, decrease in DPS for the blue side here. Is this going to be enough? I have no idea. Crypt Lord has yet to go for an uh, impale. Huge impale there, able to hit around 6-7 units, but there was just no follow-up, no sort of AoEs, and the Blood Mage gets taken down, I have no idea where he got killed off, but that was not good. No mana on the Crypt Lord means that he's practically useless. Uh, we do hear the Militia coming down. Blue side is sort of surrounding the, uh, the red team here, but with so many units, uh, this is a solid ball for the red team, and the Mount King is very close to getting killed off as well. Demon is still rampaging around. He is only level 3, but he's doing so much to disrupt the backline here. Mortar teams, 5 mortar teams. Will it be enough to fend off this attack? I have no idea, but WC is going to constantly lose his Crypt Fiends, and that is going to be GG from the blue team. Yeah, a little unlucky for WC and Yumiko. They are, uh, I don't think they're actually completely out of the tournament because there is still the losers bracket, but, um, yeah. Oh no, this is, oh, I'm looking at the bracket once again. This is not actually the semifinals. This is, oh, that's strange. This is the, the finals of the winners bracket. Okay. So my mistake there. I thought it was the, that was the semis, but it, apparently it was just the winners finals. So. Uh, they get knocked down to the losers finals and they have a chance to go for revenge. Hope you guys enjoyed, I'll see you guys again next time.